Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 26.2 RC2, or Release Candidate 2. iOS 26.2 RC2 is available to developers and public beta testers, and hopefully if there's no additional issues, this will be the final version released to the public in just a few days. We'll talk about that more in a little bit, but you'll see the overall size came in at 511.7 megabytes, that's on the iPhone 17 Pro Max. There were no other updates released alongside this, just iOS 26.2. RC2. We also the other day got tvOS 26.2 RC2, but that's been out for a few days. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go into settings, we'll go to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 23C54. And this particular update is all about bug fixes, as typically when you go from an RC1 to an RC2, that's what they're actually doing. Now this update does not have a modem update coming from the RC to RC2, and it's the same update that we had since beta three, so no change there. But as far as major new features, well, all of the major new features are the same. So they're just going to refine things a little bit more, such as maybe the lock screen here, when you can adjust the overall opacity with the clock, you can of course change that for different colors, adjust the opacity there. So you can set that however you'd like, but again, there's no new features that I've found so far in the RC2 update, but there are quite a few bug fixes to talk about in just a moment. But again, we have reminders allowing for alarms now. So within reminders, if you start a new one, you can set urgent and then make it alarm. You also have that new airdrop update as well as the level update in measure. All of those things have been updated with liquid glass and they continue to change and refine these. As far as other releases today, well, Apple actually announced that Apple Fitness Plus is expanding to 28 new markets. It says in the largest expansion since launch, the service will be available in Chile, Hong Kong, India, Japan, the Netherlands, Singapore, Taiwan, and more. And it also adds dubbing in Spanish, German, and Japanese. So those are coming very soon. I'll link this in the description below if you want to check it out and try it out in your country as well. Apple also announced something else new. You'll see it says Apple Manufacturing Academy launches virtual programming to train more American businesses. So this was announced today and it says Apple today expanded its Apple Manufacturing Academy with new virtual programming. So again, you can learn all about this here. I'll link it in the description below, but be sure to check it out if you're interested. Also, one thing I wanted to mention is 9to5Google and 9to5Mac reported that Google and Apple are working to make moving between devices easier. Pixel is now rolling out a new Canary build today, and iOS 26 betas in the near future will include an update for this as well, so maybe iOS 26.3. And another thing I wanted to confirm is that we could airdrop to the Pixel. So again, that's a new feature here, so we have to go into Quick Share. So if we try and airdrop today's wallpaper, give it just a second, it says ready to receive and I can airdrop the wallpaper here so I can accept and it looks like it's working properly again across to the pixel. So they haven't removed this. It seems like it's an open standard. So I'm glad to see that it still works. When it comes to the release notes on Apple's public facing website, you can see they updated it here with RC2. And if we take a look at the release notes, there's not a whole lot new here. Some known issues are still there with declared age range API. If we scroll down, you've got the new health kit features we've seen before, resolved issues with instruments, nothing really that new other than maybe resolved issues here when it comes to purchasing of subscriptions. So again, Apple's not giving us a ton of notes, but at least they've updated the website with the latest version here. However, there are quite a a few bug fixes. The first thing has to do with the app library. Apple informed me that they fixed this. So when you tap in here and it was a little bit slow, it's nice and smooth and fast now. Also, the respring bug I shared in a previous video is now fixed. So on iOS 26.2 RC, that's what's on this device, press and hold, go to edit, then go back and maybe we'll move a widget around here. Then we'll tap the pages at the bottom and it will respring every time. It looks like they've fixed this with RC2. So for example, on this version here, press and hold, we'll go to edit, then again, repeat the same exact thing, then tap on the pages and it works as expected. So it looks like they've resolved that issue. They've also fixed the issue with the screenshots flashing black. So again, it's, it's corrected and fixed like you would expect. You can of course adjust your screenshots, but that seems to be resolved. So we'll go ahead and delete this one. And then on top of that, there's so far been no resprings. Now it will take time to tell for sure. So far, Apple CarPlay is working and I haven't heard any complaints. Still, I haven't heard any complaints about Mercedes with the pixelation issue. And I've heard about connectivity issues in the past, but let me know if you're experiencing any issues as it seems to work fine for me. And I haven't seen any complaints since this update yet. 
Also, the wallpaper bug is a little bit different this time around. Typically, it would be more vibrant on the lock screen, but now instead of being more vibrant, it's matched and then gets more vibrant. So watch it, it gets vibrant here. We'll do it again. Now it's vibrant again, swipe home and they match. But the, at first they seem to match and then it gets vibrant. I'm not sure why there's this bug, but it seems to be an issue still. As far as the release of iOS 26.2, well, last year they did the same thing. iOS 18.2 had an RC2 on Monday, and then two days later they released iOS 18.2 to the public. I would expect the same thing this time around if there's no additional issues. So we could see it as soon as tomorrow or the next day, and then we'll move on to iOS 26.3 beta 1. That's typically what we see every year, and that will most likely be the last beta until the rest of the year. So typically we'll have maybe a new beta in January in the second or third week of January after Apple returns from their holiday vacation. So typically we'll have that. Also last year we had an iOS 18.2.1, so we could see that in January if it's needed. And then after that, I think the thing most of us are looking forward to is the new Siri 2.0 update. That's expected sometime in March along with iOS 26.4. Now, if that's working properly, of course, that's when we can expect it. Otherwise, we may not see it until later, and iOS 27 is expected to be shown for the first time in June, so that's what we can expect there. If you're wondering if you should install iOS 26.2 RC2, well, if you're on the RC already, definitely install it. Most likely, this will be the same build released to the public if there's no additional issues. When it comes to overall performance, I was surprised how fast it was when I initially installed it. I noticed right away the animations are fast, scrolling is super smooth overall, no real issues here, going into the control center, swiping, everything seems to be really, really smooth and fast. Now this may not be the case on older devices, but so far it seems to be nice and smooth. When it comes to overall heat, well, it was a small update. It is still processing in the background, but it does seem to get a little bit warm. But again, it was processing and I ran benchmarks four different times, but let's run it again and then we'll check here. So if we take a look with the thermal camera, you'll see we're at around 31 degrees Celsius in the hottest area. So overall, not bad at all. I've seen it go much higher, but it seems much cooler, at least running benchmarks so far. Benchmarks just completed and the overall scores have varied widely. I ran it actually six times here and based on when I ran it, sometimes single core was the highest, just like it was at 3,922. Multi-core was the highest earlier on at 9,956. This can vary greatly, but it's well within the margin of error. We'll give it a few days and it should improve once the public is out, if it's the same build number, and then we'll talk about it in the weekend follow-up. If we take a look at the overall battery life, Battery life for me on the RC has been okay, but it seems like it still, still needs to stabilize a little bit. So battery health, I'm at 100% capacity, 27 cycles. And if we take a look at the overall usage, yesterday I only used it one hour and 53 minutes of screen active time, two hours and 45 minutes of screen idle time, and used 47% of the battery. Today, it's much better already with the new update, so maybe this is part of the update as well. Three hours and 42 minutes of screen active time and only used 49% where I'm currently at 70. So overall, very, very good. When it comes to storage, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we'll go back, take a look at general, and then iPhone storage, and we'll compare it to RC1. So side by side, if we scroll down, RC1 on the left, RC2 on the right, it's about what we've been seeing. Apple Intelligence is taking up a little bit more for me at 9.07 gigabytes compared to 6.62, but the overall OS is identical at 13.93 gigabytes, so no real change there. So that's everything so far with iOS 26.2 RC2. Apple typically releases these to fix additional issues. And I just heard from one of you that if you're in maybe the customized icons, maybe you're using clear icons and you go over to the app library, it's still a little bit sluggish. Now I'm not seeing that here, but they were on an iPhone 15 pro. So overall it seems okay, but you saw it sort of draw everything in or fill everything in. And sometimes it can be a bit odd, but let me know your experience in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.